Um, welcome everyone to the second episode of the Training Ground. Um, and this is an employment series to support those in the pandemic at this point in time, obviously who are having maybe challenges with um, navigating a new career or with their job. Um, you might have gone through a redundancy um, or just want some tips on how to navigate for the, for the future. Um, today, we're really excited to have Natalie Ojiva on um, and she'll be able to share something around dealing with setbacks, um, something that probably everyone has in their career. So Natalie, um, welcome. Thank you for being part of our second episode today. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> I'm very uh, excited. So firstly, um, how's it been for you during this time, um, during the pandemic? Um, do you know what, it's, it's, it's been a, <laughs> it's a transitional curve, I must say. Um, at the beginning of it, it was very, very difficult kind of managing not being able to go out going to do things that you want to do just normally yeah yeah um, but in terms of work it's been very busy which has been very interesting so okay. my workplace has switched from working from home um but because of now we don't have and I, again i'll go into a little bit around what i do in my day job um because our physical sites aren't open what what we found is we're able to get involved in more projects that we might not have been able to have the time to do. Okay. Um, so yeah, it's been an interesting one, the, the, especially over the last couple of weeks with everything that's going on in the world. Yeah. Uh, it's it's been very busy, um, but I'm definitely obviously it's after the fourth now, so we're allowed to go out a little bit. Yeah. More. Um, so I'm feeling good now. I'm feeling in a positive space, um, but I definitely will say it, it definitely was a transition. Yeah, I think. I think so with everyone, it definitely was. Um, and we, st we still are to some, yes, some effect. Exactly. Um, uh, firstly, congratulations on, um, I saw you won the Rising Star 2020, We Are the, ci we are the City, I the Banking and Capital Market. <laughs> so what was that all about? If you could just give us a brief uh, overview. So it was a little bit around uh, my journey, so how I kind of got into my career. So I, I've been working for the uh, financial institution for eight years this year. Oh, I know wow. I don't look old enough. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was about my journey. You know, I started as an apprentice, um, one of the first 2000 apprentices to join the bank. Um, wow. Then I moved on to get my scholarship with with the company and, and I, they paid for my degree for three years, which is fantastic. Wonderful. Um, and then just kind of the extra things that I've been doing through work. So I, I do a lot of community work, especially for the black um, community, but also yeah. young people that are young carers as well. So it was a bit of a recognition of it over the last eight years of my career, which is really nice. Really, really wow. nice. That we won't ask your age because you do look young. I mean, eight years, yeah. that is fantastic. Um, but I'm sure you've got loads of experience that you can share in, around setbacks. And you mentioned um, about being a, a young carer. You know, there are some who may be experiencing that, yeah. me, myself. Um, uh, I also experience that in terms of being a young carer in my family as well with, with my siblings. Um, how, how was that now for some that might be, you know, obviously a personal setback yeah. or challenge? How was that for you? Um, it definitely, and, and even still to this day, it, it can be a, a really big personal setback because um, it's family and, you know, yeah. family always come first. And I think there's there's a bit of a, I've had a massive struggle in terms of juggling um, my personal life and putting my personal life first and then almost yeah. taking a step back from work. Um, I, I, it's funny because I had this conversation the other day with someone and I said, I think when you're younger, you're a lot more resilient than mm. you are when you're older. Because when you're older, you have fear factors, you, yeah. you understand the world a little bit more. Um, and things affect you a lot more when you're older, um, in my personal opinion. So yeah. it's, it's been a definite interesting one. But it's, I always, one thing that I've always recognised and, and, you know, my mum suffers from mental health and she always has done since I was a kid is, yeah. It's only in periods. So no matter the situation now and no matter how I'm feeling now, my yeah. situation won't be the same in a year's time. Um, yeah. And that's kind of what guides me through a lot of the time is forward thinking um, and, and kind of recognising how I feel and embracing how I feel, but also yeah. embracing that this isn't a longevity. This, this yeah. will change and develop over time. Um, but it takes a while to get there, I must say. Yeah, and it's not a, like you said, it takes a while. It's not something that is a short term um, way of thinking. Like I said, it's a long term 
and having that personal challenge, you know, um, of, you know, being, being a carer or um, others might have a, a, another personal situation that they're dealing with alongside their career. So how did you deal with any, I guess, disappointments or setbacks along your journey, um, along your career journey? And how did you try and maintain uh, your positive outlook to get where you are? Um, so I guess, you know, there's a few. If, if we kind of look at um, my mum, for example, and, and having to care for her, I think one of the biggest things is I had to learn how to communicate and I had to learn how to be able to say, do you know what? I need some time away to be able to focus on my mum. And it was a difficult thing to get to. um, Because I think, especially in our culture, we tend not to like to talk about these stuff. And, and, you know, um, I was brought up to to think that what happens in the household stays in the household. No one else needs to know. Um, But I think there's times in your life you need to recognise when you need a moment. Um, And definitely for me, when I was trying to care for my mum at the same time, working full time and at full speed, my work was being affected anyway. So sometimes taking that one week out for compassionate leave or two weeks out, however much that business provides you and, and taking a step back just to focus on family, you get more energy when you come back into the business. Yeah. Um, but yeah, again, it, it's, it's, it's difficult. I've had situations at work as well where, you know, I've been in a role for a year and I've really been working up my brand and 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 trying to get that next promotion and, and my manager leaves and my manager gets a promotion and it's almost like that year work that they yeah, saw yeah. is almost gone. Um, so also with things like that, it's around recognising other key people um, and almost sponsors in the business. I always say try to get a sponsor. Mentors are perfect, but yeah. sponsors are so much more powerful because they will in, essentially embed you into that business. They yeah. will promote yeah. you. Um, but yeah, it's around. It's about, and I think again for me, it's about finding, you know, understanding where I am at the moment and and kind of mapping out a journey for the future, how I can get out of that particular situation. Brilliant, so almost working backwards, if you like, to some degree. And, you know, what you said about um, sort of that compassionate leave and recognising that, look, there is, you know, loads of challenges that, um, you know, come alongside trying to progress in your career, as well as obviously the personal situations you have in having organisations like, you know, the one you work for. And I'm sure there are loads of other organisations out there who, who support um, you know their employees in in such a yeah. way as well, um, which is definitely something um, that that is needed. And I'm sure at this point in time, um, especially during the pandemic, um, exactly. you know it's 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 probably you know the conversation is a is a lot more live than maybe it used to be. Um, so that's that's great to hear. Um, and so, what has been some of the best advice you mentioned sponsors? Some of the best advice you've had. Um, along along the way to help you, whether it be from a, someone who you consider to be a sponsor, a mentor, yeah. um, maybe a, something you've read in an article. Um, so uh, definitely sponsor would would be one of my top. Um, when I kind of transitioned onto, because very early in my career, and, and again, I'm I'm happy to share my age. Um, I'm only 25. So wow. when when I started the bank, I was I was 17 and I was quite young and. I was very aware that my mentality as a 17 year old does not compare to people that have been in 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 the bank for 25 years and you know again I come from a very different background to to some yeah. people um so I for me I needed to understand the culture of where I was going to work at and and what things worked so yeah. Mentors is perfect for developing that. But again, that sponsorship piece is so important when you're going to apply off for roles. Um, because then these sponsors, especially if they're in high places, um, yeah. can say, do you know what? I, I recognise Natalie. She's worked in the bank for this year. She's, done, she's been involved in X, Y and Z. This is what I know her personally to do. That yeah. is very powerful. Um, another kind of top tip, and I always remember this and I've always taken it away, has been... Recognise where something is not being done in your business and do it. Mm. Be something different. Um, so a lot of the time, especially when I first started, I worked in branch network and and oh. it is very much, you know, serving frontline customers. And yeah. I thought, OK, how can I make myself different to all the different other cashiers um, that are across the UK? And 
one of the biggest things that I took away was doing community events and, you know, going to my local schools and being like, right, do you know what apprenticeships are available? And oh, brilliant. Linking in with other companies. So that, especially when I first started doing that, that was something that no other apprentice, <laughs> let alone cashier, was doing. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, recognising in your business areas where people aren't doing things that are really community citizenship based. Yeah. Because... Uh, Corporate um, CSI is so important, um, especially to corporates. It is yeah. kind of their butter and bread. So if you can think of these ideas off the cuff and, and you know, run with that, that shows your init initiative, that shows your drive. Um, but, yeah, that's probably the top two tips I would give. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, and I think that's, that's a really um, strong tip, especially to find out what isn't happening and how you are able to add that value to, um, you know, the organization. Um, that's brilliant. And even when you're at home, you might be thinking, you know, sometimes it's hard to switch off. You might have an idea and think, OK, I might do a little bit of research there and take that into work the next day, for example. Um, now, moving forward. So if, for example, um, someone's been in a role for a little bit of time, um, they've recognized they've had a few setbacks in, the, in their role. They've been disappointed. They want to go for promotions. Um, but it just hasn't happened. So what do you think the first step is to help someone to move forward then? Um, feedback. As as much as feedback is so scary, because um, no one likes having, you know, negative feedback given about them, but yeah, it's so essential to the development to hear where things aren't working or, or things that you need to work on. And I remember, um, you know, I was going for loads of interviews and I was benchmarking, I was benchmarking, but I just wasn't getting the role. Um, so sorry, I, benchmarking, just for our viewers, sorry. what does benchmarking mean, if you don't so, mind? It is a very technical term, but essentially it's when you pass the role, um, but you haven't um, been the top scorer, if that makes sense. OK. So yeah. you've you've so say, for example, I wanted to go for a relationship manager role um, and there was 10 other people that applied for it. Yeah. Two of us could have done really, really well in the assessments, but that one person got the role um, but they felt like I still could, you know, be successful but there was someone better than me essentially yeah okay um so yeah I've had a few instances of that and I was just thinking well why aren't I good enough why why do I keep being told you can do it but you're not great enough for the role mm. um, and I think feedback is is honestly important and in in a lot of the times with your feedback it's it's well a lot of the times with my feedback I should probably say it's been the way I have um presented something or I haven't been able to explain something correctly or you know yep. it, it, it's shown that I haven't understand understood something fully um and feedback is is really important I think there's I I think it's called Jahari's window yeah Jahari's window, um, yeah. Where, yeah there's a blind spot and unless you get the, the feedback that blind spot in the box won't move yeah. um and I think that's really really important because you know we only see what we see yeah uh, but other people see a whole different view. So it's really important to get that feedback. Um, and again, the feedback can help you in your assessments. It can help you in your working relationships, because sometimes it can be a working relationship thing. Um, yeah. Sometimes, you know, you might find that you're, you're not having the best, um, building the re best rapport with your colleagues or with your manager, or, you know, people have different communication styles and you just don't know how to kind of match up to make, make a really good working environment. So yeah, yeah. that's really powerful. Brilliant. Um, and with the, the, the disappointments or, or setbacks um, that people um, experience, it can easily obviously influence other aspects of people's lives. Um, yeah. How would you try to suggest that someone stops that from happening? Like you said, you know, you look at, try and get some feedback but then that feedback for some people could really, you know, challenge them where it's now affecting other aspects of their of their lives where actually it's supposed to be positively uh, yeah. constructive. So how, how would you encourage, you know, um, those listening in, young people, um, you know, people who've been in their, their roles for a few years like yourself um, to stop that from happening? 
Well, I've, I've, I, and I'm probably one of those people that I, I take feedback very personal. I'm a very emotive person. Um, and if it's not what I want to hear, I get really downheartened and I get really upset by it. But what I've learned to do is, is, and, and again, I think it comes down to the power of paper and pen, really, and putting things out there. Yeah. I tend to write a list of things that I'm really proud of myself for doing, um, whether that be at work or outside of work. And I think a lot of the time we can get very emotionally embedded with our career and and what's happening with our career. And, yeah, you know, yeah. our career is the, uh, the being and end of all. Um, but sometimes just the personal thing. So, for example, I'm very proud that I'm, I'm my mum's carer. And, you know, I'm very proud that I've come from a background where, Eight years ago, I would have been classed as a statistic, um, yeah. someone that, you know, wouldn't have got employment. I wasn't in education at the time. Um, so a lot of people would have thought, you know, I, I would have, God knows, I don't want to say on a, on a recorded video, but not ended up in, in the way I am today. Um, so there's so many things that I'm proud of personally. And yeah. I think it's important to recognise those personal things as well as work things, because yeah. you're not who you are at work. I mean, everyone tries to be as much themselves in the workplace as they possibly can. But who you are with your family and friends is very different with who you are with your colleagues. And it's important to recognise that they are two different people. And, you know, you should be proud of the stuff that you do at work, but also be proud of the stuff that you do at home. And, you know, I started up a, a, a YouTube page for natural hair two years ago, and that's something I'm massively yeah. proud of. And, and that's got nothing to do with work. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's, it's really important to recognise those pieces outside of work, because your work could change. And, you know, I've been in eight different roles in in the last eight years and wow I think, yeah it's, it's 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 been a crazy <laughs> journey um and i think if i'd held myself to accountable for just being that business manager or just being yeah. that cashier i wouldn't be where i am today well that's that is powerful um especially what you said about um you know your identity also out, out, outside of work you know your you're not just pigeonholing yourself um, think right, work, work, work. And sometimes individuals can see their jobs as their identity. Yeah. Um, and also you mentioned that you've, you know, you've done a YouTube page for natural hair, for example, you go and speak to schools in relation to apprenticeships. Um, how helpful is it for people to see their job as their, their identity, um, especially due to the unknown nature of one's career and the trajectory at times? I think, in, in my honest opinion, I think it's really unhealthy. I think your work, what you do should have an impact in your life, but it shouldn't be the sole butter and bread of your life. I think, like I said, if I had held myself to just a cashier eight yeah. years ago, I still would have been just a cashier eight years ago. But I know that I'm not just a cashier. I am, you know, a black woman that, that has come from a very disadvantaged background that could share a light to other black women that have gone through really difficult things. And, you know, I don't limit myself to my job role because... You know, I think is, and it's very important to say who I was eight years ago is very different to the person that I am now. Yeah. Um, anyone from my school would tell you that. Um, so it's it's very important to say that you know who you are in your role is not who you are overall. Overall, and and that will change over time. Um, but yeah, I think I've been in that. I've been in that kind of world where. I felt like my work was my all and I had nothing else. And I think when you go through a really difficult time and there was a point where I was signed off from work because I was a bit unwell. Um, I had a few operations that year. Um, and that really kind of made me realise that I felt like I was in a rut because I wasn't at work. When yeah. really there's so much, like this pandemic, pandemic, for example, a lot of people have come out of work and, you know, been yeah. redundant. There's so much other projects that you can get involved in or, or things that you absolutely love that maybe you didn't have the time to do yeah. to, to embed your time into. And that's why I say I don't think you should, you know, feel work is your whole identity because it always changes and adapts over time. Brilliant. And that's that so true, especially at a time like this, where yeah. unfortunately there are many cuts being made. You know, I think last week it was about 12,000, yeah. you know, jobs and that's really a challenge, but finding something else that you're able to, to do as well can really support that. And, and just lastly, Natalie, um, you mentioned about apprenticeships and obviously you went via that route. Um, yeah. 
Could you speak to how, I guess, for, for some people, apprenticeships might actually be the route. Um, yeah. And obviously, you're a definite success story of how apprenticeships have really transformed your career journey. Um, what would you say for anyone thinking about uh, entering into an apprenticeship? Oh, I love this. I, I, I'm a massive advocate for apprenticeships. And I think a lot of people think of apprenticeships to be very old school. Um, but they're not like that anymore. And I would say 100% go for it because the position that I was in at um, 22, when if you look at some of my counterparts that had went to university and had done their degree, I'd still done my apprenticeship. I would still got my degree um, for free without being in debt. And I also had four years worth of work experience under my belt. And I think that is probably one of the, especially when I speak to my friends, was one of the most difficult things for them as a graduate was yeah. getting that graduate role because they didn't have the work experience in the field because they had been doing their degree for so long. So yeah. it was almost like um, a bit of a trail going backwards, whereas I had gotten on a very kind of, at, at the time, eight years ago, it was an MVQ. I understand that the, the scoring system and, and the education system has changed yeah. now in terms of um, degrees, but it was an MVQ level two. Um, and I was honestly a cashier. And from that, I went to, in those four years, I went all the way up to branch manager and then also oh. started looking at regional strategy for, for the East region of, of the UK. Wow. So I had tons of experience. Whereas if I went to university, yeah, I, I might not have had that. Um, yeah. So I definitely say, if you're looking for an apprenticeship, 100% go for it. Um, it's, it's honestly, if I could go back to being an apprentice now, I would. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's but yeah, no, it's, it's definitely 100% worth it. Well, look, uh, Natalie, it's been an absolute pleasure. Um, and thank you for being on the training ground. Um, there's you. so many tips um, that, you've, that you've spoken about, um, especially about dealing with setbacks and I'm sure lots of um, uh, young people, individuals who are listening and, and, and watch the video back um, will, be, will definitely be encouraged by it for their career now and in the future. So thank you very much and uh, take care and stay safe. See you later. Okay, bye.